Bees are responsible for pollinating a lot of the crops in the world. There are more than 20,000 bee species in this planet and we're relying mainly on just one, on honeybees to pollinate our crops. We are in the Central Valley of California where 80% of the almonds of the world are being produced. That means more than 2 million beehives that are required to pollinate these farms. However, we are in serious challenges as there's a lot of bee species that are threatened to extinction. So we need to take action to try to overcome this. And one of the main reasons is bees' lack of nutrition. As we have removed natural habitats, they don't have flowers to feed while the trees are not blooming. BPO started in 2016. We're hoping to understand if there were opportunities to improve the way we're producing food. We started understanding that pollination was one of those single topics where we didn't pay too much attention. And that could generate a huge impact towards that pressure that farmers are starting to have from consumers. Because farmers need to produce more with less. But when we started asking them, do you know what's the contribution that the bees are making to the pounds of fruits that you harvest? Most of those answers are no. Almonds uh, like long, hot, dry summers, and they like relatively cold winters. So you have to be within certain latitudes across the globe if you hope to grow almonds. Almond flowers, they usually get more pollen in the morning and they get a nectar reward in the afternoon. Yeah. So it looks like the trees are giving them some energy at the end of the day to say, hey, next day you need to go do the work. <laughs> yeah. I met Stuart the first time back in 2018 and he was very open to have a conversation around pollination. I think farming is always evolving. The thing that I love about Mateus and his team, he represents like somebody that's taking the latest in science and technology and applying it to something as basic as pollinators. I love that type of innovation and thinking. It's, it's really progressive. So we did a lot of research and partnered with some of the best bee biologists in the world to try to understand which were the key molecules that were very important to bees diet. We feed the bees with specific products that are related to the crop that we want to pollinate. A blueberry product, cherries, avocados, strawberries, apples, pears, and many other crops. But we found out that there were some key molecules found in the plants that could enhance bees immune system and by doing so we could reduce bees mortality by up to 70 percent and also increase uh, their activity under cooler temperatures. When farmers hire bee flow to pollinate their orchards we design and execute pollination programs and we feed those bees with our technologies. Besides that during the bloom time we measure how pollination is going and we make decisions to maximize crop yields to growers. I really just love that moment when you first crack the lid and the bees recognize that, the, that their roof has come off and they, they kind of collectively take a breath and then relax. I really enjoy working in the lab and I love the setting in academia, but when I saw what Bee Flow was doing and how quickly we were advancing farmers' mindsets and change in the real world, it was so exciting to me and that's why I jumped on the opportunity. Another key technology at Bee Flow is around enhancing the attraction between bees and the flowers that we want them to pollinate. So that process involves actually extracting the volatile compounds that come out of the flower. That's what makes a flower smell the way it does. And then synthesize that and give it back to the bees along with a treat. And that entices them or biases them to visit the crop instead of something outside of the farm. So every two weeks we feed the bees with this technology to enhance the attraction to that crop and increase pollination and crop yields by not adding any inputs to the soil, by enhancing a natural process and applying scientific knowledge and technologies and help them produce more with less. Historically, we would farm these trees and we would have very clean centers. We're now letting those go and we're, we're actually seeding some of those centers with uh, wild flowers and cover crops that are both good for the soil, but also provide a great host environment for the bees that we need to rent and native bees. So we know for a fact that having complementary bee species into a farm can actually enhance pollination because the bees find that there's another bee species competing for the same resources that they're looking for. So they start working harder and they start cross pollinating more, so yields increase. 
Over the last 50 years, there has been a lot of innovation over new ways of irrigation, nutrition of plants, pest management, plant genetics. But what about pollination? We need to study more the impact and the contribution that nature and biodiversity is having in the way we are producing foods and take more care of bees with a more scientific approach that can recognize the importance that the bees and pollinators have on our crops so we can build agriculture systems that are in harmony with nature.